lesser male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what's up, GYBB? Get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. I'm really excited. Uh, we got a special guest, and I know I've said that 500 times before, but <laughs> this time I mean it. Um, <laughs> plus, uh, we got Dre in the building. Dre has been Yay! for a minute because he was working on uh, Charlemagne's uh, show and all kinds of watch good good to, good to have you back drizzle drizzle Dre. Yeah. Uh, uh, first and foremost well not first and foremost, I mean third and foremost uh Jesus. Harry okay. what's going on bro oh man I'm good man I, I I'm I'm happier than Kanye West listening to his own album I'm okay. good man All right, that's pretty good that's pretty good yeah you ready to rock and roll absolutely man All right, we got Dre back the whole band's back together Bands back together. We're gonna make a new album and it's gonna go flop. Anyway, we're gonna <laughs> uh let me introduce my guest, a uh, good friend of mine. Um, funny, 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 funny. Anytime somebody tries to say something stupid like women ain't funny, uh, this is the person's name that comes out of my mouth. Am I lying, Harry? No, Lori Kilmartin, number one. First one out the <laughs> our gate. favorite. That's the first that's the first one I hit him. I go, you our bugging? favorite. <laughs> you see Lori kill Martin before you shut your mouth. Well, why are you talking to those people, Dante? That's true. Well, you know what? It's Cut him out like, of your life. It's just like racism. You don't know they're racist until they call you a nigga. So, <laughs> and then you go, oh, okay. I didn't know. I, I, didn't like, know. I like that you wait till that point. I feel like there's a lot of red flags before that, Dante. There's a lot of shit. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, you know Dante's I don't know. very generous. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what it is? You got to understand that the, you can't fly off the handle with the microaggressions. Yeah. Like, yeah. you just, you da know, you just. Dante's even. like a district attorney. He needs hard proof. I need hard proof. Undeniable <laughs> proof for conviction. Got to wait for the M bomb. And oh, yeah. you know, they can't. <laughs> Oh, we got, got the you. evidence we need. We got well, the evidence. Dante, I, I also I think because of your look, when you get even mildly annoyed at something, it can yeah. be taken by uh, terrified people as something worse than it is. Yeah, know? yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I, you know, Harry used to say that to me. I was like, man, that guy's great. And, and Harry would be like, no, that yeah. guy's a fucking asshole. He's great to you. Know, you. He always treats me nice. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> So it is what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, it's good to see you, Lori. Good to see you. Yeah, great. I'm, to see I'm you. liking the wet look on your hair. I feel like you <laughs> feel like you showered for us, which is awesome. I did. I just got out of the pool and I uh, took a shower. So yeah, ready to go. You got, oh, you got a pool out there? Now? You are a bad bitch. God. Ah, <laughs> no, I swam at the pool, not uh, not uh, my pool. Yeah. Uh, oh, all right. All right. I'm like, Sorry, oh, I'm like, I'm like, Lori, things are going great for you. God damn. I mean, when you're next to a pool, things are going at least good. Yeah. It's at least distance. good. Yes. Yeah, you're next to a pool. She uh, can't be that bad. I don't know, Harry. You never, you ever been to uh, Andre? You ever been to a Super Eight? A Super <laughs> Eight? They got a pool. Super yeah. Eight motel. They got a pool. Uh, <laughs> got a pool. Things ain't it's going a little good. green. It may not be blue. <laughs> it's not, not going green, great. But it ain't no, I'm not talking like about that. herpes water. I'm talking about good pools, man. A pool is a pool, Larry. A pool yeah. is a pool. So it's good to see you. Um, like I said, Lori, Lori, one of the funniest people I know. Um, and uh just consistently funny. Oh, yeah, I use her writing prompts on Twitter. Really? Oh, you use those? Oh, cool. yeah, yeah. I've checked what them out. Yo. Wait, Harry, hold on, hold on, Dre. What is? What are you talking about? I don't even know about this. She helps uh, new writers not yeah. fuck up much. <laughs> she really? Tries to minimize the fuck ups that new writers make. <laughs> it's like no, all yeah. all it is are like a list of transitions that I would yeah. use to write to write monologue jokes, and uh, I just kept a list of all the ones that we were using at Conan, you know, and there it's mm -hmm. all just stuff you've heard but you know when you're under time pressure you can't remember them and it kind of they all sort of lead your brain a different way with the, yep. with the setup so uh give me, it, give me an example Lori. give me an example uh uh <laughs> I, you know um shit i can't Dre, you want me to Dre, Dre, you want to give me one <laughs> it's like to today in the news it's it's a well, monologue yeah. setup. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. It's a setup, okay. and then yeah. in in keeping was, with in keeping in you know uh, in traditional standard, and then the punchline. So whatever whatever you you your I'm fact the for the monologue. Pardon. Yeah. I had the picture saved because you made it in a list. <laughs> yeah. So which explains why 
Yes, exactly. All that kind of stuff. Still yeah, no yeah. word. Yeah. You can read about it in, which confirms everyone's suspicions. Yeah. That kind of oh, set of shits. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. yeah so dope. my phone. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool. Right on. I do a I do a writer's workshop, Lori, with like young comics, and I just I they 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 pay me money to get on Zoom and I just tell them how much they stink. <laughs> really? <it's, laughs> oh, I want that gig. It's really, it's really. <laughs> Harry, Harry makes Harry feel very uncomfortable mm. when he sits in. He's like, oof. He's like, he oof. goes right in too hard. He goes, jeez, you got to give these kids some hope. <laughs> why? Life why would you? Fire. Why would you want to give someone hope when they could they could go off and well, have a happy money. life? Not <laughs> that's the thing. It's the fact that they're paying for it. It's one thing to just give them advice and go, "Hey, you should quit this shit." It's another when they're coming to you with money. I'm like, Jesus, these kids are paying for this beating. But 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 you yeah. know what? You pay five hundred dollars for someone to get you out of a business, or you pay forty years of your life. Oh, and shit. then and still be negative five hundred dollars at the end of your life. It's not I even five hundred, Laura. You put it's fifty bucks. Fifty oh, bucks class. You gotta raise your prices. Well, it's only it's only per one hour, one it's it's per, per session. session. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Per session. I, okay. Then I do it like every three weeks. But it's like I'll be like, look, what is the do you get I will say to them, do you give a fuck about this? Like why because <laughs> if why you are don't you give talking, a fuck. why are you talking about fucking Snickers? Do you really love Snickers that much? <laughs> I said, you take you like gonna... a sports coach approach to it. That's like, like when I'm thinking cool. of like playing when I was playing sports and any kind yeah. of it's that type of stop sucking. It's it's stop it's like sucking. you put yeah you pointing them in the right direction from showing them the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah well I go. But Dante you... will give technical advice too, but he he does mix in like why are you doing this? Do you give a shit about this? But then he'll also be like. All right, less asides. You got to get right to the point of whatever. Really? The like you're holding about. their heads at this shit, just looking yeah. at it. Look at this. Well, right. you know, here's the, like so. There's got like a lot of times with guys. I mean, uh, the guys will be like, "Yeah, I thought this," uh, and then I shit my pants, and then I'm like, "This stinks." And the girls will always go. So I was hanging out with my mom, and we went to the mall, and mom, you're a whore, and I go. Nobody gives. Nobody cares about your fucking goofy mom. We don't care. <laughs> None of, nothing. Of what, I go look. At yeah. the very least, if if you're funny, we'll listen to whatever you have to say. But you got to prove that you're funny first. And if you don't give, I mean, we have jokes that we've said thousands of times. If you don't give a fuck about it, why would why would they? Why would anybody else give a fuck about it? They can tell if you don't care. Yeah. That, you, that you're talking mm -hmm. about something you don't care. But they, you know, and also just because something's true doesn't mean it's funny. And most of the time, it it never actually lines up perfectly enough to be mm. a joke without it being rewritten. You know, right. mm -hmm. exactly. so yeah. But I was I was gonna say, and Andre might uh, agree. So are you writing for Charlemagne now? Yeah. Okay, so like sometimes you have to write jokes about things you don't feel passionate about. You know, 100%. for like because you're writing, because you're writing, right? Yeah, you're writing yeah. for so, someone. So you you could have like a Snickers premise and be like, oh, who cares? But, you know, you just yeah. need some dumb little joke to open up the show. Right. You could still figure out a way to write a good joke. You don't have to like feel it in your guts every single time. But it right. does have to be a, a good joke, you know? Yeah. Right. But I mean, these are guys, these are young kids who are trying to be stand up comedians. They're not right. I mean, I, I don't think like if you're right, just because you write good jokes for yourself doesn't mean you can write good jokes for somebody else. You have to write it from their point of view and mm -hmm. you have to be present from their point of view and write it from, or from whatever the point of view of the joke is. They haven't even learned how to write jokes that they give a fuck about. Right. They don't, you can't write, they, they, if you can't write for yourself, you can't write for somebody else. Yeah, you, you can't. Yeah. So he's, it's kind of like that's level. That's like senior level. These guys are all fresh. These kids, these guys yeah, they're are brand all fresh. New and, they, and they think it's yeah. all going to work out. Here's a funny thing. The one of the things about I always remember um, we were and I, you know, I don't give a fuck about dropping names, but uh, we were me and me, I was giving Laurie a ride home and you were living up in Washington Heights. Hey, puppy. Right. 145th. Uh, yeah, I still yes. have the place there. OK, so I'm uh, I uh, I'm dropping her home and we're talking about Warren Holstein. Right. And Warren, yeah. Holstein, Warren Holstein was a guy who relently, relentlessly is totally unaware of himself and how he's perceived and, and so on, just kind of. But I will tell you this. We had him on the show and absolutely, I absolutely under he like revealed a lot of things where, where I'm like, oh, I get because uh, he's kind of like Gilbert Grape. 
you know, <laughs> like like his mom is nuts. Like he he has a he got, he got married. He's got a cute little kid, and he had to tell his mother that I can't let you see the baby anymore because all of your teeth are broken and you're scaring the baby, right? Oh, <laughs> like oh she's my God. like she's. She's out there, right? And he, she was like, "Look, ma, I, I, you know, I know you love the baby, but you, this is your teeth. Like her teeth were like jagged, like you know, like." So she, and she wouldn't fix them, not because she couldn't afford it, but because she just it was right. she mentally just, not able to. Yeah, just not. She's just trying not to keep it real, you know. She's she's trying to keep it real, real, son, <laughs> all day. real jagged. <laughs> and he was like, "I can't remember that, Harry." She was like, oh, yeah? "I can't, I can't." Oh yeah. He was like, "I tried to tell we her, gotta you gotta get you, these fixed because you, you gotta can't get your be around my kid like this." Some, I, just, the kid I mean, there's a crying. lot of other issues other than that. Like, she was yeah. literally wow. like a big, you know, whatever, five hundred pounds or something. Yes, yeah, large. If I remember, Gilbert Grape. I mean, yeah, straight, straight Gilbert Grape. Yeah, so, there's a lot. So it explained a lot about Warren. Right. But we me and Maria on, on the thing and I go and I'm saying I don't understand how people are so unfunny and they're so confident. And Laurie said to me, Laurie said to me, well, we have to be we, <laughs> we have to. We got to believe it, even though we know it's not true. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, we don't. <laughs> we we, we can absolutely not. I mean, but this was like. Lori probably was one of the one of the funniest comics in the game, and she wasn't getting her due. She really wasn't. I, to be real honest, I still don't think she's gotten her due in terms of how sharp Lori is and how how good she is. I mean, but that's a you know, I mean, you were always able to get writing gigs and stuff like that. But as a stand up people I, and I, I, you know, I don't say this a lot, but if you. You want is you want uh, you, I mean if you're tired of this fucking Netflix mediocre shit that everybody's go see Lori. Lori's a beast. This <laughs> is a beast. And yeah, absolutely. You can't, and I mean like not even not because you're on the show, because you know, I, I won't I won't, you know, Harry will tell you, Andre will tell you, I wouldn't say that if it, <laughs> you but, just say nothing instead <laughs> and not talk about it. No, say I, you compliment your jacket. She got yeah, mad yeah. jackets. <laughs> Yo, that is shiny. The fur one, she got a leather one, denim yo, jacket. Got, yo, I never seen and the, you when you touch the leather, so butter, so, Mad butter so, jacket. Butter you call a Lori Kill jacket, actually. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, and Lori's you, sweetheart too helps out a lot of people. She helped, helped a lot of out. people. Yeah. Help. She was oh, Lori, cool. Lori was yeah. uh Lori was hosting bringer shows when I started. Oh yeah, with, yeah, for, uh, at, the, at the cellar and at Gotham, no, no, New, yeah, at New York at New York Comedy Club. Sure, I'm yeah, about yeah, way yeah, back, yeah. yeah, with yeah. Chris Murphy. Murph, yes. yeah, Murphy. I, yeah. I, I guess he and Al had a falling out, and he's working at a different club, not the Broadway anymore. Which is weird because every time I go back, and every time I'm in New York, I worked at Broadway, and then right, uh, right, right, right. Uh, hold on, let me just uh, <coughs> make this yeah. go away. I'm sorry. Yeah, he was um. Back. He was uh, so during the pandemic, um, Sheba, Sheba Mays, Jackie Mason's yeah. illegitimate daughter was working a room. Uh, what was what's the room? The lizard something? I don't know it? it. I don't know it. I mean, she, it? Three monkeys. Three monkeys. Right. It was it's, three clo monkeys. it's close. Yeah, it was three monkeys. And then Al found out that she was doing a show and she was like, really? You know, and she was doing well. And then he he fight. He basically and, and Chris was playing it and Al fired both of them because they were because they were getting stage time to, uh, you know, make their career better. So he was like, you can't do that. It's and it's also so, so dumb to do that in Times Square because yeah. uh, I mean, well, I don't, want, I, I don't want to criticize Al. I love Al. It's unnecessary. There's so many rooms in Times yeah. Square. It doesn't yes. matter. It's just a yeah. total tourist haven. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know. People uh, take things personally, the, yeah. uh, but also it, it, it seems like in stand up, all these these uh, rivalries also disappear too. you know, people yeah. make up and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Back and forth. I mean, they're, they're back and forth. But I mean, I think what I think what's changing about that is that um, there's so much you can do on your own, you know, to promote yourself and to kind of go straight to the audience that you don't really have to kiss anybody's ass. I mean, if you really put the work in on your own thing, you don't have, I mean, there's people who got Instagram followers who are, who are selling out theaters now oh, that, that don't know any of these people. And, and a lot of the people that we, you know, that we were, were, were these gatekeepers um, 
basically, and and Lori will, uh, I believe Lori, 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 they were, they validated us in terms of whether or not they thought we were worthy or not. Right, right, right. And a Lucian, lot of time, like Lucian at the top and then everybody yeah. else. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And Lucian was a piece of shit. Fuck him. God bless. Mm. He's gone. Thank God. <laughs> fucking piece of garbage. Um, uh, and he died. He, he was died a tough his, guy. He was a dickhead. He was a, a, people try to go, you know, anybody who worked him let that he worked, they go, yeah, but he was a tough guy, but he was, no, he wasn't. He was a piece of, I've heard him say to, there was this, this chubby girl that auditioned for him and he goes, listen, you can either, uh, you can uh, gain more weight and just be a spectacle. Oh God! Or, or quit comedy. Oh my God! Like, that is so him. Yes. And, I, and, and <laughs> as he, he said, That's you get, get so That's fat so that you you somebody has to saw you out of a house and then do comedy from that or quit. And he, I always say he he told me when he, I was this from he goes I don't get this pirate thing you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> pirate. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. And then his, and he uh, had he had yeah. a disease where all of his organs got hardened, and he just turned into a stone like Medusa, which is the perfect, <laughs> which is the perfect disease for him. Anyway, moving on. Um, oh my God. But yeah, the, uh, you know, Lori, I don't give a fuck. And and oh, it's, yeah. it's and well, it's here's re- the thing. The other, the other thing too, like in stand up, your enemy will be my patron saint, and yeah, vice yeah, yeah. versa. And yeah, you yeah. just go, you live with it. You go, okay. I will yeah. say that one of the one of the guys like uh, Mazzilli was fair always. Like even if he didn't like you, he, he didn't do anything. He kick you in the nuts or nothing. Yeah, right, he, right, right. he just would say, "Look, this, I don't think you're a good fit. Go someplace." But uh, there were so many dudes that made it a point to kind of fuck you. They they got joy yeah. out of yeah. Out I of, agree. And and, 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 and of just like sitting in their little chair and telling <laughs> you if you were going to make it or not, which yeah. no one can do, you know? Yeah. 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 Somebody like Alusha now would be, you know, it's laughable because you can't, yeah. there's no rules. There's no, there's no rules whatsoever anymore, which is good. I mean, it's, it sucks when a TikToker can sell out a stand-up club and you can't, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. it's cool because uh, no one says, you know, you have, you have to gain 200 pounds or lose 50 Right. to be successful you just go all right well uh i'll just do a character on tiktok and yeah. um see you later <laughs> yeah yeah i mean but you you still have that going on you still have those people who are in charge who yes. are who are who are you know you know yeah. for, sucking their own dick for la- yes. lack yes there of are work. there's other way around other 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 ways around like right. okay so i can't get a netflix special or i can't get a special i could put up produce. something on YouTube. Of course, yes. I would have to pay like $35,000. But I mean, there's ways around it to create yeah. your own stuff. And yeah. it still yeah, yeah. sucks to not be anno- be part of the anointed, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, royalty. But oh, well. Yeah, but the, you know, most of the time, the anointed royalty sucks dick. And you and, but, uh, and I mean, <laughs> it was Lori, something that Lori ended up doing that wasn't uh, wasn't like officially released at first was the, those tweets about your your family or your dad dying oh yeah first and then that became because it was natural and took off you ended up doing a book out of that if i recall right 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 but that wasn't something that would have if you had pitched that to yeah nobody would have nobody would have been oh that was a great idea yeah that's true that's true about your dad dying (laughs) you know but you did it and people were receptive because it was great it was great it was real (laughs) and then you know yeah well thanks yeah I mean, um, we, we've also been doing the podcast for nine years and, you know, I, you know, there's, you know, we're starting to make a little money off of this with the Patreon and all the, all the different kind of um, platforms and stuff, but you gotta, it's also a matter of putting the, I mean, I think a lot of times we put the energy, I, I, and I mean, this is like anybody, um, the people will have a nine to five and the energy they'll put into a nine to five, they would never put into their own career. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, I worked, I worked for the phone call, phone company for 27 years. It got up at six o'clock in the morning. I worked from seven to four. Um, I still, are I, you done? No, I got two, two more years years before I can retire. Otherwise, I don't get the full I don't get the full pension. And you get a full pension. Yeah, a full pension. Full you and, and Patrick had cringe with your full pensions coming up. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I got three more years and I, I got two, two and a half years left. 
But I mean, when everybody else was hanging out till three o'clock in the morning, I was hanging out till three o'clock in the morning, then dragging my ass out the bed at, at six o'clock in the morning, go to work, getting a nap God. in a, on a, you know, I remember falling asleep on bags of cement sometimes just being, and right, I would right, go, right. go, go yeah. until, until I would pass out and then continue to do it. And so when you make, but that's, I, I don't think I've ever worked a 40 hour week. I don't know. I mean, I, and, and you wrote for people, you ever work a 40 hour week writing? No, no, Mm -mm. like even in, in yeah, yeah, it's, it's 40 hour, but I mean, imagine working a 40 hour week for 27 years. You know, when I think about if I had put that kind of energy in my career. Oh, into your standup. Like if you just sat like and, and worked on your act for seven hours a day, every, every aspect of it, you know, every social media, social media, this, that creating content, writing stuff. And so, you know, my grandma used to always say that um, anything worth something is worth a just sacrifice. And, and I think that when we are forced to get a job, a nine to five, it's like people are, uh, we want to be controlled. We want somebody to say, you got to do this, you got to do this. And then we, because of that, we do it. You know, we write, like if you're in a writing, you got deadlines, you make sure the deadlines are there because you know there's a parameters there. And then when we get it for ourselves, a lot of times we don't put that time and energy in ourselves. And I, and I also feel like we don't think we're constantly letting people define what our value is, you know? Yeah. Like, Let me, can I, can I do, I, I mean, I know what you're saying about not putting the same amount of hours into comedy or something like that, but also yeah. it's not, it isn't a nine to five job. And so to, to, to expect your brain to, it, it's, it's just not, like, we think of shit on the, at the club, right, the fly, you're writing yes. frantically yeah. at the club, you're in the shower, you're driving, something happens, right? It, it, it that doesn't, that doesn't work with, uh, you know, working for AT&T or Verizon or something like that. Right. You don't think of something for Verizon in the shower. You don't give a shit about Verizon, right? Right, right, so right. So creative right. career, <laughs> like, I don't think if people aren't able to, you know, uh, sit down like a, like a robot and, right write in a legal pad six hours a day. Don't beat yourself up. I mean, it comes in spurts and you right. can't really control it, but you'd want to be receptive to whenever, you know, you know, when you're hot, you're running hot. Well, you right, just, right, right. that's when you start writing and you lean into it. Now, if you're working at a regular writing job, it's a job and you will figure right. out your work despite not feeling hot or anything at all. Right, 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 but, right. But for your own self, I think, I think it's actually much more common to wedge it in, in different parts parts of the day. I, yeah. I agree with you, but I, I guess what I'm saying is I understand what you're saying. It's like early in the morning, around five or six o'clock in the morning, when I, I, I go to the bathroom, I come back, my creative, I'm going, my, there's stuff coming out of my head, like blah, 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 all ideas and premises. Then I go to bed and forget it all. You know what I mean? So you gotta, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you, you think, I, what, what the fuck was I talking about? But what, what I will say is, especially when we say it's TikTok and all these other social media platforms you can work an eight hour day not maybe maybe not in the creative aspect of it but in you know <clears throat> in posting consistently posting and doing those things that are not necessarily to create i understand that the creative part of it is something that you have to you you, you gotta kind of wait till you feel it you know until what, it, uh, what i've done in my like I'm fresh, new, but I'm still I'm figuring out how I'm going to do it. Yeah, yeah. And what I've done is uh, my good days, I kind of structure it where I, I, I wake up usually at nine and then I have it set on my phone like a timer will go off at like 12 to write for a, a specific purpose. <laughs> so I'll tell myself to try to write a script and then or I'll tell myself to try to write my monologue shit. Right. And then I have it set on my calendar where I do this a minimum of four times a week. And then the other days I have another sh- fucking beep beep. Yo, Trey, go that's at like mad, four. Trey, that's mad gay, yo. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I try to but do. I, mean, I try to like a- I put like different blocks of whatever creative what needs to thing. be done. Yeah, yeah. So like I even like fracture faction in like a certain time frame for a specific type of exercise to... now, let me ask you this because you set up that that program do you yeah. think that you do you think that your body kind of knows your brain kind of knows okay this is a time for this and because i it, feel i definitely like notice more 
yeah. since doing this because it, it started when the pandemic started because now right, I had right. this a new level of free time. So that's when I started doing it. And then when I got the Charlemagne job, it was like it kind of helped me not like be able to wake up at 7 a.m. <laughs> and produce. And, yeah. Or, and like or, or I'll do I'll still be doing stand up. Mm-hmm. And I like figured out a schedule of like how much stand up I can do and still have the energy to do this other thing. Right, right. At a certain level, right? And then I'll you can't like, do I'll, it all. Yeah, I'll try to like fact put. I I'll, I'll change my exercise around how I'm feeling. Like yeah. certain weeks, that I didn't touch any heavy weights. I didn't touch right, any right. weights. Period. Right. right. I was oh, just only like do- for for just to conserve your energy. Cause yeah, like I was oh. trying to do everything. I was like, all right, since <laughs> I, I got seven, I got this many spots this week, and I'm going to the studio got, too. Uh, yeah, I'm not okay, squatting so, today. Okay, so yeah, there's no kettlebells. There's no yeah, dumbbells. Yeah, yeah, Take yeah. the weight vest off. And then I'll I'll make a point to be like, I'm going to just walk and it, yeah. like I'll try to change things up. And like I even I have like a fucking book that I try to journal like, all right, this is how I did. And it makes me feel what, more when I fuck up. Like I could feel I could see it's almost like I could see myself being like, bro, here's the off ramp of this. You you're, on the fuck up road. You are on the road, bro. Get back on the freeway. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I could kind of see a little better now. Here's a little path off this shit. Change it up. Well, it, it's, 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 like it's, 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 it's an interesting thing because a lot of like I'll take guys who are like really guys who are really having problems with relationships or having problems in relationships can't meet women. And one of the, th- one of the things is that I have a whole plan that I put a guy through right. that makes him more social. And one of the, the, the first step that we talk, we talk, we used to talk about this all the time is later five breaks. What that means is um, a guy will go out and pay a compliment to five women a day, every day, nothing sexual, with not wanting something in return um, and something that's honest. So, wow, your, your, uh, your hair looks great. Push back, period. Now, I'm not looking to I'm not looking to get your number. I'm not looking to get I may not even find you attractive. That's not the point. What I'm doing is I'm taking something that I really believe and I'm and I'm and I'm forcing myself to be social in a situation where I'm usually not social. So one of the things is that what parallels to 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 comedy and everything else, whenever fear is available, whenever fear is present, you're so, you know, everybody knows about the fight or flight kind of syndrome. So but the minute you your body when you're in that fight or flight syndrome or, or that that mode, your body adrenaline pumps to your your extremities, to your muscles and stuff, because this because of that fear, it doesn't pump to your brain. Right. So when fear exists, one of the things I've realized as a comic, when fear exists, if you if you're a comic and all of a sudden you got something that you like, you're doing your first Fallon or you're doing your first Conan, you are afraid. And that fear, it 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 cuts off your ability. Like the minute that fear is present, you're all like all of the work that you've done to be savvy and seasoning and techniques that you've learned that is cut by half, maybe a third because of the fear. So mm-hmm. now you can't even access that file cabinet of, of all the years of your experience because of the fact that you have this fear and the fear comes from this is your first TV spot. This is your first this is you think that this means something more than it does. You think that you've put value on it. And because you and not to say that it doesn't have that, but because you put value on now you have fear of failure. And the minute you have a fear of failure, you you cannot access all the wisdom that you've attained throughout the course of learning. how. And I think that happens with anything. I mean, even when you're when you're when you're in there's a social dynamic situation, male, female, female, film, whatever, because you've decided that this person you you in your head, you go this person. I want this person. I want to have sex with them. I want to have a relationship, whatever it is. And you put stakes on this and then but you haven't learned to just be social just with nothing in return, because when there's something at stake, you always that's what brings the fear. It's the fear of losing something. And so I would have a dude do I have a dudes do five times a day, just go out and 
hey, that's a beautiful sweater. That I love your shoes. I love it. Nothing sexual, nothing, but it has to be truthful. So it teaches you how to be honest and not go ahead. I'm sorry, go. Was uh, it is it always women? I mean, why not compliment men? I, I say that too, but the, the but the first thing is women because the, the approach anxiety is with the women at first. So I'm okay. confronting that. But yeah. like I, you know, I'm, I mean, go ahead, Harry. You so want to say something? we were talking about, see, I want to, you always talk about how things tie in, even though you don't think that they tie in. We're talking about the work that it takes to get the comedy writing done and the scheduling yeah. and the, you know, how much you have to put into it and the writing packets. Anything you want to do, you have to find a way to do it. Like you to have to find done. a way to get it done, whether even if you have no clue, you have to find a way to get the reps in or attempt to do it. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. happen. So even whether it's writing comedy or learning how to talk to people, you literally have to find a path to do it. You got to make the effort, even if it's not great. You got to find the time to work out if it's working out like you have to find a way to do it. You have to find you have to examine. Am I using my time wisely to accomplish this goal? So like Andre sets a schedule, you know, to get that writing done because that's the goal he's trying to achieve. So whatever right. that goal is, whether it's comedy or life, you have to make an effort to do it. And sometimes in life, we just assume it's natural. Yeah. Um, the other the other thing is, I think, um, but I, I agree with you, like I'm social. I mean, you know, I mean, Lori's known me for years. I'm social with guys, girl. I'm social with everybody. But the, mm -hmm. the, the, the main anxiety was Oh, I, I want somebody I want a nice person I could be in a relationship and they would they would panic. And so the minute they so I would also say not just the women that you're attracted to. Older women, uh, women that you're not attracted, women that are not your type, but just find something honest that you can go. And what happened? Well, I think what happens also is the joy that you give people by just paying a compliment. You also start to I think that that becomes you know, I've had so many guys say to me, man, I, I, you know, I thought that I would get cursed out or I got this, especially with the whole Me Too movement. But what I'm, I'm not saying for you to be a dirtbag, like you can you can talk to a woman, be honest and not be a dirtbag if your intention is not dirtbaggery. Like dirt if, 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 if the intention is sincere and, and that's the same thing with comic comedy, if you're. If you're talking about, you know, your father passing away and you're talking about it in an honest and sincere way, people are not offended. They're not they're not offended. I mean, some people are, but who gives a fuck? But the point is, there's a sincerity in truth. Yeah. And, and I uh, when I first started joking about my dad dying, uh, I wasn't good at it. You know, right, like it right. took me a long time to get a comfort level with even saying the words and acknowledging yeah. that it happened. Uh, and people, uh, people were able to use that as a reason to walk out of the showroom, <laughs> right, 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 you right. know, but when I got better at talking about it, it was like, no big deal. Right. Then it put them at ease. And so I, you know, people stopped walking out and now I open with a chunk about my mom dying of COVID and it's, right. and it's like, it, they're kind of some harsh jokes, but I'm so right. comfortable talking about it. And I'm used to having dead parents now that, um, right. It people are, you know, they stay in the room and they laugh and they're fine with it. Also, and that's the amazing I, part for Lori is that she followed up the success of her her father. Her dying. My dead father <laughs> with, with the uh, success of my dead mother. Yes. Yeah. How do you follow that up? And Lori found a way. <laughs> I'm not, not going to say that Lori was celebrating, but yeah. I'm just saying. She was like, ah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, dad died of lung cancer. That's pretty dramatic. But right. my mom dying if, of of COVID during the COVID pandemic really raised the bar. So yeah, sorry, I got, if, cheers if to that lady. If a book about her ex-husband dying, we're going to be like, all right, Laurie, maybe the cops should look into this. <laughs> 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 this seems like a pattern. But well, we're this, never married, but I know what you mean. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'll also say that Lori was also a person that always wrote very edgy jokes and mm -hmm. she would, she would, you know, one of Lori's, my favorite jokes of Lori, Lori would say, um, she just, I lost, uh, would you say I lost 15 pounds? And he goes, yeah, something about the uh, I had. An oh, abortion. no, it's, it's a no, no, no. So it's been 10 months since the baby. I haven't dropped a pound of my abortion weight. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> and uh, so Lori would always go hard and then they would groan and then she would double, <laughs> she would, she would double down. And it's they part would, of my process. Right, right, I, right. I get my initial groan and that tells me, OK, we've got a bite. We got a yeah. nibble on this yeah. fucking line. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then.
then she would double down. And because she would double down, you, I mean, one of the things that I, I realized more than anything, most people are afraid. I mean, everybody's afraid of something. And when you when you just have the 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 confidence to say, I'm afraid, but I'm not going to but I'm going to be brave and bravery exists in the presence of fear, not not without the presence of fear. It's not not yeah. being afraid. It's, ha it's having fear and still following through. And and I, I used to watch Lori and she would hit them with some of the darkest stuff and they were <laughs> grown. And then she'd hit them with another one and she'd hit them with another one and they would go. I, I guess this is the ride we're on. So <laughs> yeah, they, and we, she's she's still she hasn't left. She right, won't right. leave. Yeah, well, right. I guess we'll just surrender. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. But it's it's the same. Like I would have guys in the, and even in the first week of them, just first of all, it would always take them two hours to pay five compliments, which is ridiculous. Like you could do it. You, you could literally do it in a in a couple of blocks but it would take because yeah. there was so much anxiety <laughs> i can't lie that. that's funny as fuck to see from a satellite right, this nigga like, being like hey good looking and listen you do that shit in this you know what is it 10 degrees out tonight you get that shit done if it's that's 10 degrees out there. <laughs> that would take two hours <laughs> and then and then i would always get guys who like I, who really trusted me and trusted the process a week or two, they would almost be bored of it. So it's like we've all gone to open mics that didn't really do anything for us creative because it was just a shit room. But just the process of doing it, going up and spitting it out of your, even with shitty, a shitty open mic with people who hate your guts. It does. It just that even that helps. Then the second week they would get they would lose more, less and less anxiety. And then when the anxiety would started to go away because of the repetition, then they would be more interesting. They would be more charismatic because they, what makes it what makes it creepy is the fact that you you don't want to lose. So you're trying to strategize. You're, you're literally guys are trying to strategize to get you in bed. And when they're not strategizing to get you in bed is that's the guy that gets fucked because he goes up. Oh, this guy's chill. He's not. And if I don't want to, I'm fine. And if I do, if I like him, that's fine. But it's good. No, I, I feel like you don't talk to a lot of female comics because no one is strategizing to get us in bed, Dante. <laughs> I'm they're, sorry, I apologize. I apologize. They're, they're strategizing to get us uh, off the stage so <laughs> that they can they can actually hit on a woman they're attracted to. Yeah, but well, I enjoy being I enjoy being part of this discussion of the fantasy world where guys are trying to fuck me constantly. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's keep playing it. All right. No man, Lori, you got somebody you're dealing with now or no? Mm -mm. No. No, I'm just going to wait till my kid has grown up and then try to date again. <sighs> so how long you got for, before that? Three more years. Jeez. And oh, you're not going to date. Would you date somebody if you found somebody nice or you just not? You just no, would... be, I mean, I, I, uh, I, my, I, the, I have my nights either go to stand up or my son and that's it. Mm. And at some point he'll be so old, he's not going to want me hanging out with him at night. So while I, this is like a window that's closing anyway, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah. Cause he's not going to want to be around you soon. He want to be around his friend, but isn't he getting like that? I mean, last no, time we talked. No, because of COVID. Because oh, of COVID. Oh, right, 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 because right, they're right, isolated. Right. They got to test before they, it's just a nightmare, yeah. right? Like yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they've all been stunted emotionally. So, uh, but at some point they'll just be able to hang out and go to each other's houses again. Right. right and that, I, when that happens as a teenager, he'll be sort of gone forever in a way. And right, then right, right, I will right. be free. Right. Right. Fuck. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, but I I remember before the COVID, we talked and you were like, he's kind of getting into you were telling me that he's into his friends and he wants to. And then the whole COVID thing, it kind of. Yeah. Fuck up it fucked up so Stella couldn't get her groove back. Yeah. It is no. fucking, it we is need fucking. a white remake of <laughs> no, oh my god, that'd be amazing. Instead of a Jamaican and some Russian motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh man, that's my specialty. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, I, I you know what I, I kind of talk about this sometimes in in as if the I, I, I don't know if I'm just not aware of the pandemic anymore. Like I just be talking like, I ah, just go hang out and go get laid. Go fuck somebody, Lori. And you're like, 
<laughs> Dude, it's still, you know, yeah. you know, you like, the and, and for me, I, I'm having it easy too. my son is triple vaxxed and all that. Like Julia, uh, Julia, I forget her last name. Rossi, I think was uh, she has two. She's a, a comic. She is yeah, I know, a very tiny child. And those right. people are fucking trapped because their kids aren't vaxxed. And if they go out and bring Omicron back, their kid could be in the hospital. So right, right. parents of young kids are having an incredibly different pandemic than someone like me. And yeah. I'm having one that's, you know, more repressive than yours. You know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. I kind of feel like it's going to be like it's going to be <laughs> the norm. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just going to be like we're going to have different variant every, and it's just we'll yeah. become it, part it, of the way we it feels like every winter we're gonna have another, something like this yeah. for yeah. like two months yeah. <laughs> during Lord, the holidays it's just Lord, gonna you, really suck for a couple months when you talk about the dating thing and holding off have you done any of the dating apps i've never heard much whether or not you have or haven't tried no, them I, or... I was on uh <laughs> I was on Match, I think. Uh, the last time I was on was 2014. And then after that, wow. that one. And the guy, the guy who was with, he was a nice guy. But he, he goes, he goes, you just, you want someone to do errands for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I realized, I'm like, because I was like, if you could do this and I could do, like, I wanted him to just cover a lot of things so that I could do what I wanted to do, like help right, out right. with my son and stuff. And then I'm right. like, I guess I do. I I just want, I want someone to fill in the holes so that I can do stand up and do what I like. And then that's, you know, that's, that always makes for a bad relationship. And then I'm involved in drama. That's, that's kind of going to take away from taking care of my kid or whatever. So I just sort of cut it off. I mean, women can do that maybe a little more easily than guys. I don't know why, but uh, I do feel like when my son is, is kind of done needing me in this sort of way. Yeah. that I'll be. You should go on that on that app, Angie's List, and then you can get all <laughs> your great all dating t- app. Task yes. Rabbit. Keep going the task task rabbit. rabbit. Yes, Task Rabbit. That's my dating app. <laughs> like I like long walks on the beach, and I like a guy to be. I used to do Task I, Rabbit. I, like I remember I should felt. <laughs> long I, walks I, on the beach, and I want a guy to be able to do electrical. Can you? Can we get that? Can someone hang my mirror up? I uh, I, can, I can't find the studs in the wall, so yeah. if somebody could find that for me. The they treated like, like they rented a boyfriend for the day. Right. <laughs> like, like, the like, fucking, He's the like, app will tell t- you to build a couch and then you get to <laughs> build a couch and then she goes, uh, can you help me with this and that? And I'm like, what? The, none of these things you gotta pay me. I don't love you. <laughs> and, it just, and it goes, the, the, no, you know, the, it. you know how they do the range of the money? It's, a, it's $20 or a hand job. You just... <laughs> 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 Crazy. Um, the um, how's the how's the baby daddy? How's things going with that? Oh, it's good. You know, we uh we do family dinners now. You know, we hang we we hang out with our son a lot, so uh-huh. it's it's good. It's it was you know tense for a while, <laughs> right. but uh, it's not that sort of tension isn't there. And right, right. Uh, how so does we that can... happen? Like, how do you get to that point where you go from being tense to amicable? Um. <laughs> Time. I, it's time. It's totally time. Yeah, you know? but there, like, time. it's like more than I time was... because there are people who fucking still want to kill each other. My parents have been divorced for 15 years and my mom still talks about murdering my father, mm. literally wow. about setting his house on fire. I'm like, wow, it was like, it's time to move on. It is. I mean, has she dated? Has she? Oh, yeah. Moved on? She's got yeah. she's got she's, she, she was, was dating when years. they were together. Yeah. So well, that was the problem, Lori. Uh, she didn't. Well, she was dating early. Yeah. <laughs> That's what led to the divorce is she was dating well before she was. uh Well, that part was fulfilled, I guess. <laughs> OK, well, yeah. wait, is your mom is your mom Armenian? No, she's Ecuadorian. That's hilarious. Oh, she OK. Armenian? Well, is she a Kardashian? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if she has she's part of an ethnicity that maybe would would uh, keep her trapped in revenge and perhaps maybe. Ecuadorian Ecuador is a little bit. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Whole, the whole They're on the equator. I mean, I thought they would be more. Wait a minute. Chill. You I, blaming her cheating on her country? <laughs> I mean, no, I, I was suggesting that maybe culturally she was raised not to uh, then, to it to embrace her revenge. Uh, yeah. You know, at some point I realized this is making me sick to my stomach, and 
And then I just felt, uh, you know, your life gets filled with other things at some point, you know, you start dating or, you know, other things happen and the other person's life gets filled with other things. And then, you know, and that's, but honestly, when you have a kid, it's so like you, you, it's so weird because normally you just break up with somebody, you never have to see him again. And then you have to to cooperate and negotiate with this person for 18 years. And it's like, that's, it's, it's mind blowing, you know, but you can't just be like, goodbye, never see you again. You know? Well, it's, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know if you, I I, I don't know if you know, um, Lori, but I had a, I had a son, I have a son and then, and then my wife, went back to England, took my son and went back to England. Oh my and gosh, how old's your son? Two, uh, two years and uh, five, six oh, months. Wow. Was, couldn't deal with living here, didn't really, was, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I don't go into the, I don't yeah. go into the slammy slam, but what I find is that I, what really helped me was um, that I realized you can't make somebody do what you want them to do. Mm-hmm. And you can't, you people are only going to do what they want to do. And um, but that's true for you, too. You don't have to do things that you don't want to do. Um, and if you're if there's I think because the emotion is involved initially because of there's you feel a betrayal or whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. Now you're angry and you're dealing with it in that way. And it becomes kind of a funky thing because you're holding you're holding something back about how you feel when I realized, I realized through, just through doing the podcast and through helping dudes go through relationships and women go through relationships and breakups and so on and so forth. Moreover than not, um, they don't work because people don't like each other. You know what I mean? And, and even if right. they like yeah, each yeah. other, they're just not compatible. If you, if yeah. you're a, if you're somebody who wants to do comedy and wants to wants to, you know, the, your career and your creative aspect is and you're not one of those moony, moony, tootsie, you know, like goofy, romantic, whatever. And you can't be with somebody who needs that. And I think, you know, mm-hmm. I've said this a thousand times that relationships are easy as long as you understand that you have to know what each other's non-negotiables are and then never negotiate, you know, negotiate them. Yeah. But you got to be honest about what the non-negotiables are. And a lot of times when we're together, we don't w- when you're with somebody, you're willing to compromise these things and you're not really honest about what your non-negotiables are. I want to mm-hmm. get into this, but let's get into this, Harry. Let's get into this behind uh, oh, the, the Patreon. Patreon and then. Um, so, um, Laurie, anything you want to plug and we're going to do a few minutes behind the Patreon if you can. Oh, I have an album out called Corset, uh, C-O-R-S-C-T, like the uh, clothing that you wear to tighten your body. And um, it's a, you could buy it. That'd be great if you would buy it. You can stream that, but I don't make any money if you stream it. And if you buy it, it, uh, any place, iTunes, wherever you get your albums. Okay, dope, Um, dope. Yeah, and I uh, have a podcast with Jackie Cation called The Jackie and Lori Show. She's also a comic and uh, it's just us. Jackie's great. Yeah, the two yeah, of you together awesome. is fantastic. Yeah, it's fun. So uh, check us out. Okay, um, Dre, you want to do something? We've been spitting your spitting your credits out for the last. A word. Shit, but go, yeah. but go ahead. What else? Yeah. Andre D. Thompson on all the stuff and slouch theory. That's it. I appreciate you, Dre. Uh, Harry, talk to me. Uh, it's all at Harry Turjanian on social media. It's all good. Yo, Google me, bitch. Um, <laughs> you know what to do. Um, uh, just also don't forget the one-on-one consultations. Go to DanteNero.com and click on consult if you want to do a one-on-one consultation with me. You can, you can book some time with me. Um, don't forget to jump on the Patreon because that's what we're getting ready to do now. We'll go behind the scenes and we're going to really dig in to the personal stuff so everybody can hear. Um, that's uh, www.patreon.com slash manschool202. Um, GYBB gets your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all, man. Um, stay tuned.